In the early 2000s, WWE stood head and shoulders above every other company in the wrestling world. ECW was gone, New Japan was more than a decade away from reaching its peak heights, and WWE had officially beaten WCW in the Monday Night Wars. However, in the absence of WCW, a new promotion would start up as a phoenix rising from the ashes, TNA. This company was leaps ahead of its time, mixing old WCW favorites with some of the most exciting athletes just itching to make the big time. The six-sided ring, the X Division, and more all contributed to an exciting show that would linger on to this very day. But who was the forefront of this brand? Who stood as a beacon of hope for this community? Community, why that would be the phenomenal one AJ Styles. A wrestler who had the perfect blend of athleticism and technical ability, Styles became a bright spot wherever he appeared. And over time, Styles would find himself being named by many as the best professional wrestler of his generation. And after succeeding in TNA, Styles would find a new home all the way across the world in New Japan Pro Wrestling as a figurehead of the Bullet Club. There, Styles proved to everyone that the hype surrounding the phenomenal one could be backed up with some compelling matches and shocking feuds. But after captivating audiences all around the world, the then 38-year-old veteran would finally walk into the doors of the Titan Towers and start his journey as a WWE superstar. Through his time so far, Styles has redefined what it takes to be a star, with his global popularity immediately putting him in the main event scene. So today, I want to take a look back at AJ's time so far in the WWE as the phenomenal one continues to revolutionize what it means to be a WWE superstar. And right away, his debut sent shockwaves throughout the entire wrestling world. Following weeks of online speculation, Styles finally made his debut in the 2016 Royal Rumble match. Entering at number three, the crowd exploded as the phenomenal one made his presence known and was immediately positioned as a big deal. I can remember that day as if it was yesterday. I was there in the crowd sitting in the nosebleeds, but once I saw the word phenomenal hit the Tron, I was screaming. It was insane. Seen as too big for NXT, Styles immediately left an impact lasting almost half an hour in the match before being eliminated by Kevin Owens. The following night on Raw, Styles would once again be put in a top position by entering a program with Chris Jericho. And after beating Jericho with a roll-up pin on that episode of Raw, the two would go back and forth over the coming weeks as they continued to exchange victories. This all led to AJ's first singles match on a WWE pay-per-view as the two would battle at the following month's Fastlane with Styles tapping out the former WWE champion. And because of this series of matches, the two had earned one another's respect and would form a part partnership dubbed Y2AJ. But like many of Jericho's partnerships over the years, this would be a short-lived team with Jericho attacking Styles. And in the upcoming weeks, Jericho and Styles would continue to battle until it all came to a head at WrestleMania 32. But Styles, unfortunately, suffered a major loss with Jericho catching him in midair to land a picture-perfect codebreaker for the win. This loss, however, would not derail Styles too much as on the following episode of Raw, Styles would win a fatal four-way match to become the number one contender to Roman Reigns. But Roman Reigns would be no easy opponent for the Phenomenal One as the newly minted champion would easily outpower Styles. So he got himself some backup in the debuting Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. For many hardcore wrestling fans, this was a huge development as the three were once seen in New Japan Pro Wrestling as members of the Bullet Club. The group that conquered New Japan was now making its presence known in the WWE, with Styles, Gallows, and Anderson all forming a new version of the group simply titled The Club. However, even with their help, Styles was still unsuccessful in capturing the gold at that year's Payback pay-per-view. And this feud between Styles and Roman would continue into the next pay-per-view, Extreme Rules, where the two would wage war in an Extreme Rules match, and for this, Roman got himself some backup of his own as his cousins the Usos would help even the odds and Styles would once again suffer a major loss. And with three major pay-per-view losses under his belt, Styles would find himself a bit lost as to what to do for the upcoming Money in the Bank event. But when John Cena made his way back to WWE, Styles saw this as a huge opportunity to once again establish himself as a top player. John Cena, the face of WWE and the embodiment of everything a sports entertainer could be, AJ Styles, the face of TNA, and the embodiment of everything a pro wrestler could be. It was a magical moment for the fans just to see the two in the same ring together. But Styles decided to ruin that magic by shockingly attacking John Cena, officially turning heel with the rest of the club. This then led us to the first of what would be several unbelievable matches between Cena and AJ, with AJ picking up the first victory in the series at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. 
and the rivalry would continue into the battleground event as the club would take on the trio of John Cena, Enzo Amori, and Big Cass in a special six-man tag. This time, it would be Cena's team that would earn the victory ahead of the big upcoming WWE draft. You see, in 2016, WWE decided to bring back the brand split with Raw and SmackDown once again having their own shows. And unfortunately for Styles, he would find himself drafted over to SmackDown while Gallows and Anderson would be drafted to Raw and the faction would have to dominate separately for the first time being. But Styles still had some unfinished business with Cena, so the two would compete once again at the upcoming SummerSlam event. Once again, Styles would beat Cena and dub himself as the new face that runs the place. And to make sure that this new title would really sink in, Styles would use his victory over Cena to catapult himself into a feud with the then WWE Champion, Dean Ambrose. And at Backlash that year, Dean's championship reign would come to an end as AJ Styles would capture the title for the very first time following a low blow to the lunatic fringe behind the referee's back. Styles celebrated one of the best wrestlers in the world finally getting his due at the top of the mountain. And this reign would only continue as following a successful defense against Ambrose on SmackDown, Styles would finally be forced to take on two of his biggest rivals in the WWE, once again successfully defend his title against both John Cena and Dean Ambrose at that year's No Mercy pay-per-view. But as I mentioned, the brand split was back and in full effect, so WWE wanted to capitalize on this by turning their upcoming Survivor Series event into a Raw vs SmackDown spectacle. Styles would team up with his fellow SmackDown cohorts in a 5 on 5 elimination tag match to gain a victory for Team Blue. But now that the ultimately pointless Raw vs SmackDown tag match was over, Styles would finally be getting back to defending his WWE Championship as the top star on SmackDown. But like with Cena earlier in the year, Styles remembered the strength in numbers as he would once again steal a victory at the TLC pay-per-view in a match against Dean Ambrose. But while Styles would have wanted the help of someone like Lou Gallows or Carl Anderson, he instead found assistance in a very unlikely partner, James Ellsworth. You see, Ellsworth first started associating himself with Styles a few months prior as he was injected into the feud between Ambrose and Styles. He essentially acted as a pawn for the feud, continuously getting in between them, helping both men whenever he wanted. A few weeks prior, Styles kayfabe injured Ellsworth with a massive Styles clash off the stairs, so you would presume that Ellsworth would help Ambrose to recapture the gold from Styles, right? Well, in a massive swerve, Ellsworth would return at the TLC event to push Ambrose off the top of the ladder and allow Styles to retain the championship. Ellsworth explained that he helped Styles since he felt as though he could beat him to capture the WWE title. But of course, there was just no way Ellsworth was going to beat Styles for the title, so Styles quickly dispatched of Ellsworth in under a minute to finally put this storyline to rest. But where would Styles go from here? Well, there was a certain 15-time world champion who had an answer for that question. Yes, John Cena would return to once again battle AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble event, shockingly defeating the phenomenal one to capture his record-tying 16th world championship. One year removed from AJ's massive debut in the 2016 Rumble match, Styles would find himself battling a losing effort against the biggest name in the WWE for well over a decade. Styles debuted a superstar, and one year later, he walked back in a megastar and a world champion. And Styles would not take that loss so easily, as he would quickly insert himself right back into the title picture for the upcoming Elimination Chamber event, and Styles would join John Cena, Baron Corbin, Dean Ambrose, The Miz, and Bray Wyatt inside a new version of the Elimination Chamber structure. And to the shock of many, Styles would once again suffer a loss, as Bray Wyatt would capture his first WWE Championship just before WrestleMania 33. However, with the WWE title now firmly out of AJ's hands, many people were left wondering exactly where he goes from here. After the amazing year he had, it was impossible for fans to envision Styles sitting at home during WrestleMania. Well, it's here where things went a little weird as Styles would take out his anger on the SmackDown commissioner Shane McMahon. Styles blamed Shane for his recent losses and as such, looked to take out his frustrations at WrestleMania in a match against him. And after a surprisingly wonderful match, Styles would 
defeat Shane to kick off the main show. Following the event, Styles would once again turn into a face and immediately position himself back in the title hunt. However, this time, the title he decided to go after wouldn't be the WWE title, but rather the United States Championship. And after suffering a countout loss to the then champion Kevin Owens at that year's Backlash pay-per-view, as well as losing at the Money in the Bank ladder match the following month, it would all come to a head at Battleground. The match was set as AJ Styles would take on Kevin Owens once again for the United States title. However, just a few weeks prior to the event, Styles would actually end up capturing the title at a WWE house show in Madison Square Garden. And while Styles would gladly celebrate this victory and his newly won championship, Owens would once again rip the title out of Styles' hands and back around his waist at Battleground. But in another swerve, Styles would actually recapture the gold on SmackDown in a triple threat match featuring Owens and Chris Jericho. And with so many back and forth victories for both AJ and Owens, the two would finally agree to settle at SummerSlam with Shane McMahon now acting as the special guest referee. Styles once again beat Owens to retain his title and on the following episode of SmackDown, Styles proved once and for all that he is better by retaining the title in one last match with the prize fighter. But Styles would unfortunately see his reign as champion as a bit of an afterthought. Sure, he was the United States champion, but his reign didn't really amount to much until losing the strap to Baron Corbin at the Hell in a Cell event in a triple threat match alongside Ty Dillinger. However, this loss would be seen as a blessing in disguise for the phenomenal one as he would start his feud with the then WWE champion Jinder Mahal. After a boring and somewhat disastrous reign as champion, many fans were begging for someone to finally take the title away from the Maharaja, but AJ had to make a little trip over to Raw before doing so. At the Raw exclusive TLC event that year, Finn Balor was scheduled to take on Bray Wyatt, but unfortunately, Wyatt was pulled from the card due to health complications. So, in his place was AJ Styles. Now, for many hardcore fans, this was a huge turn of events. Over in Japan, both men had been a part of the Bullet Club at one time or another. Not only that, but both Balor and Styles were leading the faction during their respective times in the group. Yet, neither man had locked up in singles competition throughout their entire careers till TLC. And what happened was lightning in a bottle, as both men performed to the best of their abilities. They had earned each other's respect as AJ's one-time appearance came to an end, and just a couple of weeks later, Styles would use this surge of hype around him to recapture the WWE title from Jinder and start his over one year long reign as champion. And while that would seem impressive to many, for a lot of fans, AJ's year long reign of dominance was actually more boring than anything else. Sure, AJ is one of the best wrestlers in the world, but a lot of storylines surrounding his reign were head scratching at best and disappointing at worst. After holding the belt into Survivor Series and becoming a victim of Brock Lesnar in the champion versus champion match, Styles would continue his feud with Jinder for the next couple of weeks and a clash of champions he fully cemented his status as the new top star of SmackDown by tapping out Jinder in convincing fashion. A quick win to fully plant his foot down, and Styles was now on top of the world, only for his joy to be immediately interrupted by Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Sure, these days Kevin and Sami are a beloved duo, but back in 2017, they were a heel group that did anything to get under the skin of their opponents. After back-to-back -back losses for AJ to both Sammy and Kevin, the match was made official. Styles would be forced to defend his title against the two, however, this time the title defense would be contested in a handicap match at the 2018 Royal Rumble event. What could this mean for the championship? Could Sammy and KO coexist? Would they be able to become co-champions? Well, no. Instead, Styles picked his moments and found the perfect opportunity to roll up Kevin Owens for the win. But his reign as champion would only continue to be challenged by insurmountable odds as Styles would go on to defend his title in a six-pack challenge at Fastlane. AJ, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, John Cena, and Dolph Ziggler all wagered war for the gold, but once again, AJ survived the brawl as his destiny was now forged and his path to WrestleMania 34 was clear. After Shinsuke Nakamura's victory and the Royal Rumble match, AJ knew that he was walking into the show of shows against a very tough opponent. How did he know this? Well, because he had first-hand experience of how brutal Nakamura was. Back in New Japan Pro Wrestling, AJ took on Shinsuke at Wrestle Kingdom 11 in a match that has become mythic in its reputation. So, when WWE announced the rematch for WrestleMania, 
fans were more than excited to see what this match could be. However, sadly, this match failed to live up to the hype. Perhaps the crowd was exhausted. Perhaps they just weren't on their game. Either way, the magic they created at Wrestle Kingdom could not be replicated and their Mania match failed to reach the heights of what people were expecting. But after the match, the fans were left shocked as Shinsuke, who failed to take the title from AJ, turned heel by low-blowing Styles. At the sight of this, the fans unclenched their fists in hopes of their eventual rematches would finally soar to those heights that they were expecting. AJ successfully held on to his title over the next couple of months through his various defenses against Nakamura. At the greatest Royal Rumble, both men were counted out. At Backlash, the match ended in a no contest despite it being a no disqualification match. And at Money in the Bank, the feud was finally put out of its misery in a last man standing match, which Styles won once again. Sure, the Nakamura matches weren't anything to write home about, but they still had their bright spots. This was probably just a one-off fluke for Styles, right? Fans probably just hyped up the feud too much in their minds for them to meet their expectations. Whether you would agree or not, fans would once again see Styles in a feud that they could get excited about as he entered a feud with his longtime rival from TNA, Samoa Joe. Following a victory over Rusev at Extreme Rules, AJ would start to be terrorized by the Samoan submission machine. And over the weeks on SmackDown, Joe would attack AJ and provoke him into getting a shot at the WWE title. And at SummerSlam, fans were just buzzing as the two TNA veterans were battling for the WWE Championship, but like with the Nakamura feud, the SummerSlam match ended in disappointment as Styles would lose the match via disqualification, keeping the title under championship rules. But this lit a fire under Joe, who only went on to make the rivalry that much more personal by targeting AJ's family. He would mock Styles, make him question if he's even fit to be a WWE superstar since he's always away from his family. Family. Joe even claimed that once he beat AJ, then he was going to become a new father figure in AJ's house. Of course, though, this wouldn't happen. Styles would go on to successfully beat Samoa Joe over the coming months at Hell in a Cell, Super Showdown, and Crown Jewel. But now that Styles had put his old rivalry with Joe to bed, it was time for him to take on a new challenger in the form of Daniel Bryan. Bryan, who had fully returned from retirement by this point, had built himself back up the card and into the number one contender slot for AJ's WWE title. But Brian, the desperate and eager challenger, decided that he was going to take the title by any means necessary. Prior to the champion versus champion match at the upcoming Survivor Series event, SmackDown presented a huge main event featuring the two, and during the bout, Brian saw an opportunity to steal the title by hitting AJ Styles with a low blow to win the title and end the 371 day reign of the phenomenal one. But Styles wasn't going to take that laying down, immediately asking for a rematch at the upcoming TLC event, which he once again lost via a quick roll-up pin. Of course, this left AJ unsatisfied as Brian had once again stolen the belt. So yet another rematch was held at the Royal Rumble event. However, once again, Brian was able to steal the victory as a surprising return from Eric Rowan would shock the WWE Universe as he attacked AJ to help Brian win. Time and time again, Brian cheated his way into defeating AJ and he was going to do anything to get that title back. So he entered the Elimination Chamber alongside Brian, Randy Orton, Samoa Joe, Jeff Hart, and Kofi Kingston, but alas, he was unable to recapture the title as he faded away from the title picture. The man to eliminate him from the chamber? Well, that would be Randy Orton, who would kick off a feud with Styles heading into WrestleMania 35. And after some back and forth attacks, including an attack by Styles at Fastlane, the two finally looked to settle their differences at WrestleMania 35. And while the match was fine for the most part, Styles would unfortunately leave the event with a hip injury after securing a victory over the Viper. He returned with a goal to win the Universal Championship from Seth Rollins. After being drafted over to Raw, Styles beat Baron Corbin in a number one contenders match to earn himself an opportunity at Seth Rollins at the Money in the Bank event. After losing the WWE Championship the year prior, Styles was desperate to not only capture the gold, but to also establish himself as a top star once again. And even though Styles was unsuccessful in winning the title, he did make sure to steal the show alongside Rollins in what is arguably the best match in either man's career in WWE. But this loss for Styles would only be the first in a series of title matches. Sure, he only had one match with Rollins, but AJ soon set his sights back on the United States Championship. But there was one problem. The man who held the title at the time was none other than the one and only Ricochet. And honestly, there's just nobody like Ricochet in the WWE, so it's no surprise that he was able to outmaneuver Styles and retain his title. But this loss, after 
after so many major losses for Styles made him angry. So angry that he decided to once again turn his back on the WWE Universe and realign himself with Gallows and Anderson. And this desperate version of Styles proved to be just enough as he recaptured the title at Extreme Rules. And as hard as he tried, Ricochet just couldn't recapture the gold from Styles as he lost their rematch at SummerSlam. But Ricochet wasn't the only young hotshot looking to take on the veteran Styles, as AJ was challenged time and time again by some of the younger stars of WWE who all look to capture that United States Championship. Cedric Alexander, an often overlooked talent on the roster, stepped up to challenge Styles at Clash of Champions only to suffer the same fate as Ricochet. The following month, Humberto Carrillo took on, looked to take the gold from AJ, but he too failed to capture the title. AJ was the clear veteran able to out-strategize his opponents and while simultaneously putting these young stars over in their defeat. But following AJ's incredible triple threat match at Survivor Series featuring himself, Shinsuke Nakamura and Roderick Strong, AJ would unfortunately lose the title to Rey Mysterio on the November 25th episode of Raw. However, AJ wouldn't be down for too long as WrestleMania 36 was right around the corner, and even though he was eliminated from the Royal Rumble match, AJ still wanted to earn himself a prize at the upcoming Super Showdown event. There, a gauntlet match was held between himself, Bobby Lashley, R-Truth, Eric Rowan, Andrade, and Rey Mysterio for the Two Wake Mountain Trophy. However, the OC, the club's new name, following the reformation, look to hand AJ an easy victory by attacking Ray backstage making him unable to compete. But what happened next was something that they could never expect. Since Ray was out of the match, another man would take his place in the gauntlet, a dead man, The Undertaker. Taker walked down to the ring, hit a choke slam on AJ, and won the gauntlet to take home the trophy, and this then would set up the feud between the dead man and the phenomenal one. After Styles suffered yet another loss at Elimination Chamber via the interference of The Undertaker, Styles would challenge him to a match at WrestleMania. However, as many of you would remember, this was back in the start of 2020 and the upcoming WrestleMania was going to be held in front of no fans, so WWE decided to get a bit more creative with their matches to help make up for the lack of fans. And thus, WWE came up with the Boneyard match, a match truly unlike we've ever seen before as The Undertaker would return with his American badass persona to take on the OC in an epic battle. Taker would end up defeating Styles, riding off in his motorcycle as this was his last match in WWE to close out both his career and WrestleMania 36 night one. Following this, Styles would take a short break. During this, Gallows and Anderson were released from WWE to leave AJ all alone with his fellow good brothers to protect him. So once again, AJ headed over to SmackDown to find some single success in front of the now vacated Intercontinental Championship. The former champion, Sami Zayn, had not defended his title in quite some time and was forced to vacate the title. At a tournament was held after a handful of weeks, Styles would once again find himself in a match against Daniel Bryan. The the two went to war in the finals of the tournament, with Styles successfully defeating Bryan to win his first Intercontinental title on SmackDown. It wasn't a very long reign, but Styles did put in work as the new champion, because over the next couple of months, Styles would look to take on the likes of Grand Metalik, Drew Gulak, and Matt Riddle. That is, before he eventually hit a roadblock with Jeff Hardy taking the championship off Styles. However, by this point, Sami Zayn had returned to claim what he felt was rightfully his, and thus, a triple threat ladder match was made between Styles Hardy and Zayn for a clash of champions, and in the end, Sami Zayn was able to recapture the title with AJ Styles now left to wonder where he goes from here. Well, following his loss, Styles would end up going back to Raw and doing what he does best finding allies to help him succeed. Sure, he was one of the best, so he doesn't necessarily need the assistance of anyone, but we've seen throughout his career with him joining the Bullet Club and starting the OC that Styles likes to have someone next to him as a little insurance policy for his matches. And when he went over to Raw in the form of the towering Omos. Following the formation of this partnership, AJ quickly swooped back into the world title scene as he challenged Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship, but at TLC, Styles would fail to capture the WWE Championship before before suffering more defeats during the Royal Rumble match and inside the Elimination Chamber for Drew's WWE title. But while Styles may have been suffering in singles competition, his partnership with Omos would actually prove rather impressive as the two built themselves up as a tag team. So much so that at WrestleMania 37, Styles and Omos would successfully defeat the New Day to become Raw Tag Team Champions, and with this victory, Styles became a Grand Slam Champion as well as the first ever person to be Grand Slam Champion in both 
WWE and TNA. Over the coming months, Styles and Omos would unfortunately struggle to make any sort of lasting impact. I mean, sure, they were Raw Tag Team Champions and they kept successfully defending the belts, but they never really felt like a standout team during their matches against the likes of the New Day and the Viking Raiders. So at SummerSlam, the Omos Styles experiment will come to an end as they lost their Raw Tag Team titles to Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. But this team was far from over. While they lost the tag team titles, Styles and Omos would remain partners for the next few months. It was announced a few months away following a six-man tag team match featuring the team of Omos, Styles, and Bobby Lashley against the New Day that Styles and Omos would face RK Bro in a rematch for the tag team titles at Crown Jewel. However, Styles and Omos would once again lose to RK Bro and their hunt for the titles were over. On the December 20th episode of Raw, after continuously failing to win the matches, the team would disband as Styles was attacked by Omos, and because of this, Styles would end up turning back into a face for the first time since 2019. While almost a year of struggling to maintain any sort of momentum, Styles would kick off 2022 still looking for any chance he could to re start the climb to the top. And in the build-up to WrestleMania, he found his opportunity against the ultimate opportunist himself. However, to the shock of many, Styles was attacked by Edge as the Rated R Superstar would turn heel for the first time since 2010. And instead of AJ using this as an opportunity to grow as a performer, Edge took this rivalry as a chance to change his character. He would debut a whole new gimmick, a darker gimmick, which culminated in his match at WrestleMania 38. And there he defeated Styles with the help of Damian Priest as Edge and Priest would form the Judgment Day. But this loss just fueled Styles into continuing the rivalry as he once again took on Edge at WrestleMania Backlash. But once again, Styles would lose with Edge using Rhea Ripley as a distraction and officially adding her to the group. AJ knew he couldn't take them on by himself though, and thus he gained the trust of Finn Balor and Liv Morgan as the trio would look to destroy the Judgment Day once and for all. Were they successful in doing so? Well, no. At the Hell in a Cell event, there was a big six-person tag match to settle this rivalry once and for all, with a new Judgment Day faction getting the win. But now, Styles decided to focus his attention not on Judgment Day, but rather Championship Gold. So AJ desperately tried to get into the Money in the Bank ladder match, one of the following episodes of Raw, but ultimately came up short at every turn. AJ was lost, and his match with The Miz only made things more complicated as a feud sprung up within the match on Raw as Tommaso Ciampa aligned himself with The Miz to attack Styles after the match. The rivalry would continue through SummerSlam as Styles would distract The Miz in his match against Logan Paul by attacking Ciampa around the ringside area, and Paul would earn a victory and The Miz would not take this loss lightly. A few weeks later, Styles and The Miz would wage war on Raw in a no disqualification match with Styles getting the win. In the following weeks, Styles would turn his attention back over to the Judgment Day. However, if you thought they were dangerous before, then Styles would learn just how more dangerous they, they had become now with Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio in the group. Interestingly though, Balor originally wanted Styles in the group, making several offers for the two former Bullet Club members to team up. However, while the offer may have been tempting for Styles, he instead decided that his loyalties lied with a few other former Bullet Club members, and on an October episode of Raw, Styles would reintroduce Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson to the company. They returned to the WWE WWE, assisting Styles in his feud with the Judgment Day as they reformed the OC. Sadly though, the returning faction would suffer a defeat at Crown Jewel in their match against the Judgment Day due to interference from Ripley. Styles meanwhile would not let go of this feud as he challenged Finn Balor to a match at Survivor Series, and there Styles and Balor put on yet another excellent match in which AJ was able to defeat his opponent, and after a huge 8 person tag match on the following episode of Raw, the feud between the Judgment Day and the OC would come to an end. It was after this that AJ Take would take a lot Lot of time off from the WWE with him recently returning at the 2023 draft as he is drafted to SmackDown but AJ Styles during his time in the WWE has proven time and time again just how valuable he is to pro wrestling. In the ring he's one of the most adaptable and versatile figures in the company. As a character he can play either a hopeful good guy or a devious bad guy with ease. We've seen him thrive as a world champion, a tag team sensation, or just an upper mid card star that can be slotted into any position. Styles is, without a doubt one of the greatest wrestlers of all time and sure the booking surrounding AJ has been a bit of a mixed bag throughout the years he still has always gone above and beyond to make the best out of any situation. AJ isn't just phenomenal he is an icon to many wrestling fans and during his run in the WWE more and more people have seen that AJ Styles is the total package.